You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody, and guess what? I am back. I finally decided to show up for work, or at least for the radio. Um, yeah, this is Grammy Mary and Grammy's Rocket Chair on a wacka 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 doodle Wednesday. <coughs> Excuse me, and I've been... I've been busier than a cat covering up you-know-what in a litter box that just plain ain't got enough room to be covering up all that you-know-what. So, yeah, grandkids, huh, and weather, and yard, and garden, and yeah, and, 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 and. So, let me see, before I get into too much prevaricating or too much going off on a tangent like I tend to do from time to time let me see where everybody's at real quick over here on twitter holy smokes thank you barman for tweeting me out i truly do appreciate it yeah and it is just a wee bit i'm not quite 103 it got up to 100 out here today and i could tell i was out working in the garden and transplanting replacing some things that got flooded slash hail slash tree branches falling on slash you know, whatever, whatever. Um, okay. Let me get that retweeted real quick. Thank you, Barman, for doing that. I have a 410 stalkers over here on Twitter. I lose some, I gain some, I lose some, I gain some. But all in all, eh, I got over 400. So I'm like, dude, Meister, what the hey? Okay, now that I've seen who's on Twitter, I'm going to go ahead and, and thank you, Vinny, as well, hun. And yeah, we are on reallibertymedia.com channel 3 and also on the RLM Spreaker channel and later to be on the RLM YouTube channel and the RLM BitChute channel. So get that all put out there before I totally spaz it off because, yeah, I am just a skosh on the spazzy side. Now I'm going ahead and shutting down Twitter. Over here on this effing site, this absolutely fantab- phantasmagorical even, fantabuloso, and barman is doing experimental postings. Test. This is only a test. If it were an actual posting, well, it's still a posting. <laughs> Thanks, barman. I see you over here. And thank you, Grimner, for letting everybody know that I am live right now. Also, I see that Grimmy posted in the site-wide shout box that he has opened up the site so that content here can now be viewed and shared with the outside world. Hopefully, it will encourage new people to sign up here on FN. And, yeah, I've been sharing a few things. I ain't sharing, sharing. But I'm sharing a few things over here. So, let's see. Barman is over here. Grimner is over here. Uh, the lovely... No, she's no longer here. Where'd you go, Estrella? Normally, you're just hanging out. I also see Vinny is here. Hey, Vinny. And Cantrell Bison is here. Yoo-hoo. Yeah, if you worship at the altar of the state, don't be mad when they sacrifice you. First they came for... Mm hmm. That's a short little poem over on YouTube. Just type that in the search. First they came for. You'll get lots of them to come up. Yeah. It's something to make you go, huh. Huh. And over here on Mines, let's see. Trafficker of Information just posted. Uh, now, wait a minute. Don't be messing with my stream. Damn it. If your religion is worth killing for, please start with yourself. I have had that attitude for quite some time. If you seem to think that you need to be telling everybody, well, you need to die because of your religion. Hmm. If you, it, okay, if that's your, please start with yourself. Okay? And don't do this crap of taking everybody else with you. If you're afraid to go to the great beyond by yourself, then shut up about it. Okay? 
But if you think you need to take kids or spouses or loved ones or just a whole bunch of other people along with you when you take yourself out, ah, bad call, dude. Bad call. Okay, so that's F and Sight. Minds, I'm sure RLM shared me over here on Minds. Thank you, RLM. I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of. <laughs> Uh, over here on Fakie Book, don't really see a whole heck of a lot of, you know, the traffic on Fakie Book. I don't know about anybody else, but my traffic has gone down considerably, considerably. So, yeah, not a whole heck of a lot going on over here on Fakie Book, and that's okay by me. Okay, and now to the one place where you need to be if you want to give me static. Please, if you're listening in on the Spreaker channel, open up another site or another tab and go to reallibertymedia.com think of a nickname join the chat because I can't have that many chats going I got really crappy internet <laughs> I'm barely doing this the way it is so okay over in the RLM I also already saw that Rob Works had fired up the bubbler thank you ever so much Rob Works you the man you the man have any oh goodness and we got people dropping like flies okay what oh and it looks like um, the road less traveled will no longer be on darn it I really enjoy Gary L and Gigi's Boo. I listen to their podcast because, yeah, lately I'm I have not been home on Sundays to be able to play along live and in person. But darn it! But I understand. I understand. Okay, so who's over here on the RLM? I see Barman right up top, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. I also see Grimner, who is the RLM god, and he is a busy, busy man. He takes care of the RLM. He does a lot of crap or stuff things yeah he's a busy man over on that freedoms network barman is just busier than a cat covering up you know what over on twitter and all kind of other places grim you're just everywhere hun he's everywhere he's ever he's like big brother only not only cooler like a stoner dude big brother hey that would be cool um well i saw that Vinny. i saw you was in there Okay, let's see. The lovely Moose Girl is here, and she's going to do a little rat a tat a tat 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 on one of her boys. And uh, I understand that, honey. I had children do the same thing to me, and man, you know, <clears throat> that you gotta love them, because if you didn't, you'd be in prison. I gotta say that. I love my children dearly. And now I love them even more from a distance. And they have children of their own. So I really love it because the mom's curse. Kicking in again. Booyah. Hi, Kate. How's things down in Florida? I hope you're doing absolutely wonderful. And looky there. Asmo is signed in. As well as the lovely Beth Z. And Chow Sedoni, who I have not seen speak in quite some time. Yes, Vinny. Grimner is a god, but it's G-A-W-D. You know, he's one of those, he needs an extra letter. He's one of them kind of gods. I also see the lovely Chloe is here, and she's sharing wonderful things. Thank you, Miss Chloe. Um, I'm here, as well as Ibe Don C. And yes, Ibe Don C, that video really was pretty cute. Especially, you know, when the sneeze and the bada boom, bada bing went bada bounce, bada bounce, bada bounce. That was pretty funny. I also see Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is here, as well as JJ's, who's actually right now playing on webcom.co.uk. He is live over there playing some tunage for you. And looky there, Juana Taco. Sounds lovely, but I think I'm just going to have a fried egg sandwich tonight for supper. It's harvest time out here, which means it's hotter than hell. And I got traffic going like crazy up and down my road. Excuse me. So, yeah, harvest. Yeehaw! Uh, let's see, where else was I at? Rain! The lovely rain. Hi, rain. I love you, sweetheart, and I am so glad that you haven't 
uh, coerce the clouds into doing any of that for a few days, I was actually able to walk out into my garden without sinking and making that sucking noise that mud does. Oh, Vinny, you goof. Um, RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. In other words, Barman's sidekick. Don't kick her around, Barman. Be nice. Rob Works is here, and once again, thank you once again, my dear, for the bubbler. I also see Trust No One is in the house. Gaudi. Oh, go is that Gaudi? <laughs> Vinny, Vinny, Vinny. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, Trust No One is in the house, and Colfax 101 is logged in, but away at the moment. I also see Flash Nasty is here, as well as Frumpy. Frumpy! Hi, Frumpy. Are you feeling Frumpy? I'm feeling rather wilty. Did I tell you how hot it is out here? I also see Gooberzilla is in the house. Hey, Goob! And I be Doncy Woik. He's an overachiever. That's just all there is to it. I also see Kazoo and Moy, 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 Moy. And we got a lot of pox upon the RLM. We don't want poxes on the RLM. We just want pox playing along in the RLM. Got pox box, poxified, poxophone, and poxy home. As well as Pon Popon Sauce and Skittle, who likes to drop F bombs. Skittle, good job. Vinny e -E 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 is here, being his vinylicious self. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the phantom of the RLM. So that is everybody that's logged into the chat. And where do I want to go first? I found several really interesting things that I wanted to get to this evening. Some of them I was going to get to last Friday, but, you know, and I probably ought to tell you, yeah, last week Friday, I was all ready to do the show. I mean, I had Spreaker all, st or not Spreaker, um, I had my, my Sam all set up, had songs picked out, all the fun stuff. I had all kind of tabs open, so I had go-to stuff right off the bat, and then, like within 10 minutes time, we had this one cloud turn into Kilimanjaro, and that was the first deluge. We had lots and lots of rain, lots and lots of crazy wind, crazy wind, and um, lots of tree branches down, all kind of fun stuff, and I lost several things in my garden. But that was not all, because Saturday... It was like, okay, got to prep stuff, got to see how much damage, got to clean up some damage, yada, yada, yada. Sunday morning, I had to leave to go be Uber Grammy. Now, I knew that thunderstorms were projected for the area, but I didn't realize he was going to be up where I was heading, because normally they don't get them all that bad. But yeah, I had about 10 miles there where I drove through hail that was, oh, hail. Some of it was ping pong size. But thankfully, it was not hard, hard, hard water. It was kind of sort of slushy hail balls, or I would have had real serial damage to my car. But I had about 10 miles there where the hail was about three inches deep on the road, and then there was a, oh, at least a half inch to an inch of water running underneath it. So, yeah, quite, quite the adventure. And I think I post, yeah, I did. I posted a picture in the RLM chat of, yay, adventures in Grammy land and being uber Grammy. And, you know, coming back, I got to drive through it again, just not in the same place. It was on I-70 that time. It's like, damn it, damn it. I thought I stalled long enough to where I'd have, I'd miss out on this stuff. But no. And then getting home to find out that there was another mess. I had to clean up. So I have been very busy cleaning up after Mother Nature having pissy fits all over the place. But, <coughs> excuse me, the one good thing is that it has cleared the air. Cleared the air. Lots and lots of, yeah, Grimmy, I have been to hail and back. And hail and back. And I went into town today to uh, assist my Uncle Tommy with some stuff. And, um, yeah, I got to see all the hail damage that he got on his vehicles from a week ago. So, yeah, we've had a lot of hard water out here lately and a lot, of, a lot of wind. Somebody's feeling very blustery, and they need to cut it out. So, that's pretty much why I haven't been playing a whole heck of a lot on the computer. Because, uh... 
Yeah, I've been busy. I've been a busy girl. So, where do I want to go first? You know, speaking of cleaning the air, how about I go to this one? I saw this one on Twitter and I thought, hey, let's go. It's on worldtruth.tv. Chinese activist vacuums Beijing's air for 100 days and then makes a brick with the pollution. That's kind of scary, isn't it? Nut Brother, who is a performance artist in China, vacuumed Beijing's toxic air four hours a day for 100 days in a row to make a statement about the environment. So if you think your city's air quality is poor, try living in Beijing, China. Excuse me, gosh darn it. According to authorities in the com uh, communist country, the city's pollutant levels have increased to over 40 times the level deemed safe by the World Health Organization. Now, that number represents levels of uh, parts per million 2.5 airborne particles smaller than 2.5 micrometers, and they are classified as carcinogens by who? The World Health Organization. It's a rare awareness about the issue that one activist who goes by the name Nut Brother, he vacuumed the city's toxic air four hours a day for 100 days in a row. And he was hoping to improve the city's air rather than, or rather, he used his industrial strength vacuum to turn the capital of China's notoriously heavy smog into a brick. Now, Nut Brother's real name, for the record, is Wang Ren Renzeng. So, from Beijing's Hongtongs, or Old Lanes, to the Tiananmen Square, to the Bird's Nest's National Stadium, he diligently kept up with the task every day on his Sina Weibo account, which um, is a Chinese thing, I guess. And he noted the date, the weather, and his vacuuming area, and then added a photo that he asked individuals lingering nearby to take. Now, the Quartz reports that the 34-year-old performance artist first announced his plan to vacuum the dust from Beijing's air in late July. I'm thinking that's probably last year. And every day since, Nut Brother walked Beijing's streets with his vacuum oftentimes wearing a respirator mask with a suction nozzle held high to collect the pollution and polluted air. And then on November 30th, the 100th day of his project, he mixed the dust he collected with clay and transported it to a brick factory to uh, make a semi-finished brick. Wow. According to the activist, Beijing air is bad all over. There is no special supply of air. So, the inspiration to conduct this project hit on um, in 2013 when Beijing's air apocalypse sparked outrage in China. Wanting to make people think more about the environment and understand the relationship between human and nature and he allowed the idea to develop itself before pursuing the project. Now, by the end of the experiment, <clears throat> CNN reported that he had accumulated a mixture of dust and smog that weighed about 100 grams. He says that adding that mixture to clay makes a brick that weighs several kilograms, not too different from an ordinary one. So, his aim was to make a point through environmental art, and he definitely succeeded. His activism has been shared on multiple media outlets. He hopes to give the brick to a construction site and make it part of a new building in Beijing, the poetic addition to the concrete jungle. He said it's just like putting a drop of water in the ocean. Yeah? So, are you a drop of water in the ocean, or are you the ocean in a drop? All depends on your perspective, don't it? What, 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 Q, all this Q stuff. You know, I listened to a bunch of that Q stuff for a while there, and then I thought, hmm, I really don't, yeah. 
because it's basically just a bunch of obscure little blurb, 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 and then someone else trying to interpret it. Wow. So I, I grew weary of it quite quickly. Okay, let me put this over on the effing site real quick. Wow, you know, you could say thick as a brick is what their air is like. It's so thick you could cut it with the concrete saw, maybe. Okay, we'll do that one. Okay, now, what is this one? Okay, now I got to get to this fun one. This is a fun one, and it's basically fun simply because I like the headline. It's from gatewaypundit.com, and it's got a picture of Maxine Waters, which is, you know, she's ever such an attractive look for her, as if she has one that's an attractive look for her, but hey. Conservative reporter Laura Loomer presses assault charges against Maxine Waters. This was posted the 26th of this month, which was yesterday. <coughs> Excuse me. Conservative investigative journalist Laura Loomer confronted Maxine Waters outside of her office on Monday evening after her online press conference. This comes after Auntie Maxine called for Democrats to stalk and harass Republican Trump supporters at gas stations, restaurants, and whenever you see them out in public. Maxine thinks this type of abuse is civil. That's such a mature way of dealing with things, Miss Maxine. Laura Loomer asked Maxine, so should conservatives sit in the back of the bus and where should conservatives eat? And Maxine Waters did not like the questioning and swatted at Laura. And there is a clip attached here. Now, on Thursday evening, Laura Loomer went to the Capitol Police in Washington, D.C. and filed assault charges against Maxine Waters. Laura Loomer says that Maxine Waters assaulted her three times and it's all caught on camera. Hiya, Miss Chloe. <coughs> Today I filed a police report in Washington, D.C. to press charges against Congresswoman Maxine Waters for assaulting me, Loomer said. When I confronted her regarding her call for targeted harassment of Trump administration officials, Ms. Walters assaulted me three times. She hit my hand to try to knock my phone out of my hand, and then she hit me in the face with her papers twice. So, I think it's funny. And, you know, the best part is some of these are just the comments. You need to read the comments below because, man, some of them are pretty freaking funny. But I thought, oh, well... Somebody got some cojones and, and threw right back at him. Here you go. <coughs> okay. Yes, Vinny, school sucked for everybody, but some of us stuck it out, and some of us said, no, I ain't taking any more of your shit. And I, I'm going to take it, Vinny, that you were one of those, no, I ain't taking any more of your shit. Uh, my dad talked me into not dropping out. I almost did. I actually kind of basically skipped school for five days my senior year. <laughs> and then dad came in and yelled at the principal and yelled at a few other people and then told me that uh, you will finish school. You only have two months left. And well, <clears throat> back in those days when dad spoke, I listened. So... Okay. Suck it to him. Yes, I think it's awesome that this gal is pressing charges against Maxine. Serves her right. Okay. We'll do those. Get that on there. Now. Um... Mm -hmm. 
Let's see, how about I do go with this one? This one is also from worldtruth.tv, and it's the truth about karma that you won't hear from the mainstream version. I think Maxine Waters is going to be getting a little bit of karmic action going on there. So, now as a man, is like this or like that? According, according as he acts and according as he behaves, so will he be. A man of good acts will become good, a man of bad acts, bad. He becomes pure by pure deeds, bad by bad deeds. And here they say that a person consists of desires, and as is his desire, so is his will, and as is his will, so is his deed, and whatever deed he does, that he will reap. So, in the West, we look at karma as a kind of a cosmic law of justice. You know, a cause, of an, a cause and effect kind of thing. But, you know, kind of a what goes around, comes around kind of thing. But, you may be of the large majority in the West that look at karma as a balancing scale of justice that distinguishes from right and wrong. Now, esoterically, we look at karma as something that will affect you lifetime after lifetime, as in, the actions that you make in this life will affect the way you live in the next life. And I don't have any knowledge of what is beyond the here and now, of course, nobody really does, with regard to this present moment of living in the now, you and I are still here, and that is mu um, as much certainty as we can get. It is for this reason why I will not talk about karma with regard to its effects with the next life. But what I will talk about is the way in which karma affects you in this lifetime. And there is a video attached to this. <coughs> there are a lot more subtleties and layers of the human psyche involved in the way karma plays out. Your reality is your perspective. And over time, your perspective of yourself is going to change based on your memories of your past actions and intentions. This will project an identity of who you think you are, which will enhance or diminish your sense of self-worth. Now, one thing that is for sure is that who we are at the present moment is not who we will be in the future. As we live life and collect wisdom in our library of experience, we become more con conscious of ourselves. Whether we choose to use this ever-growing consciousness to guide our actions is up to us, bearing in mind the consequences if we don't. Now, the simple awareness of your ego, your past actions and intentions, gives you the freedom to carve a new destiny that will release you from your karma. So no matter what happened to you in your past, you are not your past. You are the resources and the capabilities you glean from it. And that is the basis for all change. That's from Jordan Belfort. Now awareness is the first step when it comes to removing karma. And if you're not aware of your actions, intentions, and feelings, you will continue to make free choices that are heavily influenced by these same feelings, intentions, actions. So people who are unconscious do not evolve. They're forced to learn things the hard way in life, and the more stubborn they are, the more difficult it becomes for them to break free of their karma. Living an unconscious life, even if you get away with your choices, puts you in situations that don't allow you to be free. For example, greed will attract the most fickle and conditional friendships and relationships in your life. If you're a greedy bugger, you will attract people that wish to sponge off of you. You just will. And you will also attract other greedy buggers who will try to leech off of you. And by leeching, I do mean suck your lifeblood away from you because they're greedy bastards too. So, your ego will be built on the false identity of fleeting possessions which can, which can lead to a status anxiety. 
You will attract situations in your life where people make unconscious greedy decisions against your best interests. And I don't think all of them are unconscious. Some people will make conscious greedy decisions against your best interests. If you keep vibrating in that greed zone, there's a wide spectrum of less than optimal scenarios that can and likely will occur as a result of living an unconscious life. Now again, this isn't a universal punishment or a cosmic law of justice. The universe is indifferent, and it really is. And the notion of good and bad are constructs in our own minds. The more selfless you become, the more chaotic you become to humanity as a society. The more selfish you are, the more disharmonious you become with humanity. Now this person has a total lack of empathy for the situations that they cause, and in time they will increase the likelihood of running into situations that reflect their behavior back towards them. This is the aspect of karma, where the external environment that you attract becomes your karma. So when you take from someone or harm someone, you are adding chaos and causing more disharmony in your life and in the collective. When you're empathic and selfless, contributing to the collective, you are more in harmony with it. People who have awareness of themselves are in a much better place than the unconscious person. This person may still continue to make selfish or ego-based decisions, but they're far more likely to be slapped in the face by guilt. And this guilt may even become further magnified if a psychedelic is taken. Woohoo! Yeah, ayahuasca, possibly. The guilt one experiences should not become your identity, but rather a wake-up call to rise to the occasion toward becoming a more evolved person. This is the type of karma where you're feeling judged from within. Your own mind is telling you that you are out of sync with your higher self. Now a bad trip can be nothing more than a look in the mirror, seeing all the ugly sides of yourself that disgust you to the point that when you, you feel very uncomfortable with yourself. And this is how psychoactive substances force us to break out of negative patterns of behavior. They show us our shadow side, which ultimately scares the shit out of us. You become aware of the two fighting wolves inside of you, one which is good and one which is bad. And from this point on, you know that you are responsible for the wolf that wins. It's the one that you feed. Karma is real. Part of it starts with you starting to feel. So karma is not just about bad deeds, but it's also about how you feel about yourself. Your feelings and your emotions have a lot to do with your karma. Eckhart Tolle um, talks about the pain body, which is another identification with the ego. And it makes us feel like victims whenever we don't get what we want, or feel misunderstood, or feel victimized. There's legitimate times when we feel wronged, but the degree to which we wallow in sorrow and or anger can create bad karma for ourselves, even if we truly were the victim. So if you continue to identify with these emotions, it will affect your perspective, adding a negative filter to your world. You will then make actions based on this perspective, which could lead to more circumstances that cause the initial sadness or anger and you will begin to cause problems in your reality that don't even exist, all because you are identifying with your pain body all the time. So when working on your karma, 
everything on the radar is just a tip of the iceberg. Karma is often a lack of awareness of how your patterns of behavior, which often come from your emotions, are holding you back. This is why psychedelics are popular among some people, as they have a way of showing you the karma that you're not aware of. Emotions can cause a lot of misunderstandings because they filter your ability to process reality when emotionally charged state of mind. You know, it's like you hear someone say something and you automatically internalize it and think that it's, it's a slam against you. Not everything is about you or me for that matter. Subconsciously, unresolved emotions na uh, navigate our ego through potentially destructive terrain. And this can leave karmic imprints that create a repeat cycle of more unhappy circumstances. Emotions that we hold on to can manifest in distress, which can cause all kinds of physical symptoms. And it can even change the way your brain is hardwired. This is what is called Vedic and Buddhist philosophy, or in the Vedic and Buddhist philosophy, as sanskara. I hope I pronounced that right. And that is a mental impression, recollection, or psychological imprint. And this meaning in Hindu philosophies is the foundational element of the karma theory. Now, according to various schools of Indian philosophy, every action, intent, or preparation by an individual leaves a sanskara, or an impression, impact, or imprint, in the deeper structure of his or her mind. And these impressions then await vol uh, volition, fruition, in that individual's future in the form of hidden expectations, or circumstances, or unconscious sense of self-worth. These manifest as tendencies, or karmic impulse, or subliminal impressions, and it's a habitual potency, or innate dispositions. And you realize that your attitude is a habit, and any habit can be broken if you really, really wish to break it. So embrace your karma. Use it as a teacher. Make friends with it. Not just judging or punishing you, but it's telling you the truth about yourself without holding anything back. You know, those ugly truths. Like, yes, your ass does look big in those pants. <laughs> it's not pretty. It is the most honest account of how to conduct your human experience as long as you choose to evolve. Yeah, you can suffer successfully through the events of life that slow you down or make you feel insecure. But karma is a very real thing. And it's not just our actions that create karma, but also the way we think especially the way we think about ourselves. <coughs> Excuse me. The grumpier you are, the more assholes you meet. Our ego and the actions that spur from it, <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. brings us into resonance with situations and people of similar vibration. These conditions that we unknowingly put ourselves in um, put ourselves into facilitate more actions and ways of thinking that lead to more karmic consequences. So when you're always going around saying, I always get shit on, I always get shit on, when you say that, you are telling the universe that, yeah, I know, I always get shit on, so let's bring some more, because this is a frequency I'm, I'm vibrating at right now. So let's keep me getting shit on. You know, instead of saying, I always get shit on, how about saying, wow, 
This is kind of a tough life lesson, but I'm going to learn from this one, and this one, I'm this one I'm not going to repeat. And the next life lesson, it's going to be a hell of a lot easier because I made it through this one. Because life gave me an awful lot of scars, and there's an awful lot of things that have happened to me throughout my lifetime. But you know what? Every damn one of them I've lived through. I got a 100% track record going. So instead of saying, shit always happens, just shift it a little. Shift it a little. And you'd be surprised how quickly your life turns around. So, try not to be superior to your fellow man. Aim to be superior to your former self. Who you are at the present moment is a different incarnation of who you were before. If you allow yourself to devolve, you will then become more confined to the conditions of your karma. But if you evolve through reason and intuition, you will gradually escape the conditions of your karma. Although karma can be a good thing as well, because if you keep putting good energy out there, good energy will start coming back to you. You will attract it. So... Karma is nothing more than a path you put yourself on. As you become more aware of your decisions and actions, you will then learn to make choices that are mindful. And the more conscious your choices are, the more you will find yourself in situations that benefit you, and less in situations that cause frustration, or anger, or sorrow, or guilt, or sadness. Now, Bodhidharma said that your choices are like seeds, each of which <coughs> excuse me, will harvest at the right time in your life. Karma hits you at an unexpected time in ways that you cannot prepare for, therefore making the consequences of your actions more devastating due to the inability to prepare for them. So if you feel guilty about something, that's your karma letting you know. If you feel insecure about something, that's your karma. If you're feeling frustrated about something, yep, that's karma. Welcome to the Karma Cafe, where everything is self-serve. If you feel angry about something, that's your karma. If you feel sad about something, that's your karma. Even with things that are not your fault and genuinely caused by circumstance, the way in which you handle them ultimately affects your karma. So in life, there's only one direction, and that's forward. Allowing your emotions and circumstances, no matter how hard, to hold you back from happiness is another form of karma. Self-survival and self-aggrandizement of the ego are the source of all karma. So we have to allow ourselves to go through the process of what we need to feel and then let them go and then move on. The problem is that most people don't move on. So, I thought that was a rather interesting view of karma. And yeah, I pretty much agree with what they put out there. Spigots, what are you talking about, y'all over here? Vinny, you're not a more man. You're just a Vinny. Um, dun dun dun. Okay. Put this over on the effing site as well. Okay, and where is the Buddha guy? The, not Buddha, but the Zen dude. I need, there's the Zen dude. That's the one I need. Mm, there we go. So, okay, now where to go? Where to go? Somebody tell me where to go. <laughs> um, I 
did see something in here we go that's the one that I wanted to go to it was uh, posted the 5th of March of this year all that's interesting dot com random facts that will totally melt your brain and shock your friends are you ready for these I don't know that I am but here we go so if you're looking for a fact or two to impress all of your friends look no further because these in interesting random facts will teach you everything you never knew about animal eyeballs in such incestuous historical figures Betty White Abraham Lincoln's wrestling career and maybe even your own body huh and you may also find that you've been wrong about plenty of things you only thought you knew like the old saying blind as a bat is actually is it actually true or not and has anyone ever told you that if you drop a penny from the top of the Empire State Building it could kill whoever it lands on well let's check this shit out shall we so um, no thanks And you know what? I was going to go and check them out, but wait a minute. Oh, okay. There we go. That's how I have to do it. So, yes. What's wrong with your zucchini plants? I don't know, Miss Chloe. What's going on with? What's going on with them? You might have a blight, or do you have squash beetles? Might want to check and see if you've got squash beetles too. They like zucchini plants, and they are nasty, nasty, nasty little buggers. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and keep flowering, but no veggies. Um, you may need to pollinate them yourself, hon. If you have too much water, the plants will start turning yellow. But maybe you need to pollinate them yourself. You know, go out there with a little Q-tip or, you know, like a popsicle stick and dust the flowers and then just go along and dust all of the, you know, tickle your flowers, tickle your blooms. <laughs> you can pollinate them yourself, um, but that could be part of the problem. And it could be too much water, but if it's if it's really too much water and not setting on fruit, um <coughs> you probably are just going to have a boatload of fruit because when my zucchinis do the flowering thing yeah unless the flowers are getting knocked off but yeah you might want to go ahead and and try and pollinate them yourself okay get back to this back to no I don't want that okay I'm gonna just post this so you guys can kind of scroll along if you wish to uh, number one of 51 Abraham Lincoln is the National Wrestling Hall of Fame or is in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame for having lost only once in more than 300 matches did you know that I did not know that okay where's the oh um, and it costs the US mint twice as much to mint each penny and nickel as the coins are actually worth so taxpayers lost more than 100 million dollars in 2013 just because of the cost it took to make the coins yeah in other words let's just quit doing it let's quit dinking around with it just get rid of money period that sounds like a plan to me number three Christopher Columbus never set foot in mainland North America I remember reading that somewhere else uh, number four the earth is actually farthest from the Sun during summer um, in the northern hemisphere and if it's farthest from the Sun during that time how in the hell are we having global warming here um, Uh, well, Grimmy, you know, um, uh, 
Let's see. It depends, Graham. I mean, there are some, there are some, year, or I have had some years where it was like a tanker-sized boatload. But then there were some years when it was just like a little rowboat, and I lost the oars, and I was up that creek without a paddle. So, <laughs> this year, I'm holding my breath on a lot of things. I did, I did find three cucumber plants that survived in all of the deluge. So, eh. That was a perk, and it made my mom happy because she's looking forward to cukes. So, okay, moving along. Number five, Albert Einstein and Charles Darwin both married their cousins. Creepers! Creepers! Although I did have a cousin that was extremely handsome. Number six, tongue prints are as unique as fingerprints. That's a little bit of trivia that I really could have gone without knowing. Number seven, about 8% of men in 16 populations spanning Asia are related to Genghis Khan. Huh. He was a prolific feller. Number eight, Napoleon was actually slightly taller than average. Yeah, I know there's an awful lot of people that said that he was so short and stuff, but yeah. Um... Five six, five seven, somewhere, five eight, somewhere right in that range. Okay. Number nine, Neil Armstrong was the first man to walk on the moon, but Buzz Aldrin was the first man to pee on it. Oh piss on it. Um yeah. Okay. That's according to NASA. Never a straight answer. Number ten. Humans did not evolve from chimps or any other extant primates, but instead, chimps and humans evolved from the same now extinct common ancestor. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm I'm tickled that I got some, and I do have a few other things that are peeking up. So I'm I'm thinking, not as bad as it was first thought it would be. So. Hey, I'm, maybe my beans will even survive. That would be cool. Okay, back to this. Number 11. The longest time between two twins being born was 87 days. Holy shit. I would absolutely hate to be pregnant another 87 days after having a child. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Okay, number 12. Domestic cats kill between 1.4 and 3.7 billion, with a B, birds, and between 6.9 and 20.7 billion, with a B, mammals, every year. That's just cats. That ain't taken into consideration my doggies. My doggies are kind of sort of like that as well. Okay, number 13. Light doesn't always travel at the speed of light. In fact, it's been clocked at speeds as low as 38 miles per hour. Who the, who the hell comes up with this shit? How'd they prove that? Hmm. Number 14. Betty White is actually older than sliced bread. Hmm. I love Betty White. That woman is so dang ornery. My God. Frisky woman. Okay. Number 15. There is a single mega colony of ants that spans three continents, covering much of Europe, the west coast of the U.S., and the west coast of Spain. What? What? Oh, no, west coast of Japan. What the hell? Wow, that's a lot of ants. Okay, come on. Scrolling, 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 come on. Move on to the next one. Okay, things are being poopy head. Um, close some links and see if maybe I can get it to move. You're only at 15. What the heck? Keep moving. Keep moving. 
There we go. Number 16, the dance fever of 1518 was a month-long plague of inexplicable dancing in Strasbourg, which is present-day France, in which hundreds of residents danced continually for no apparent reason, and several danced themselves to death. Wow. I had never heard of that. That is weird. Okay, come on. Move along. Okay, this thing is going to really piss me off, and I'm just going to quit if it doesn't want to go forward. Go forward, dippy thing. Oh, heck with it. Well, well, it just wasn't wishing to go forward. So, I'm going to let you guys play with that because it's being obnoxious as hell. And my malwares didn't jump up and say that this was bad juju, so. I'll just, interesting facts. We got to 16 before the damn thing said, nope, I ain't moving any farther. Hell with you. I think it was false advertising myself. Hmm. Or maybe it's just my opera. God only knows. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close that one. <coughs> so, um, where do I want to go next? Ah, yes, we'll go here. From econewsmedia.org. Now, we need to know this one because I got another one that I want to get to after this. So, Cannabis cleans up nuclear radiation and toxic chemical waste. That's from May of this year. Now, this farmer is growing hemp to save his soil from toxic chemical waste. Europe's largest steel mill in the city of Toronto, uh, Toronto Italy, used to produce over 10 million tons of steel every year. Now, 40% of that steel or 40% of all steel is made in Italy and it currently employs about 12,000 people. The local economy of Toronto, Toronto, a population of 200,000 is almost entirely reliant on the steel mill, which is one of the biggest and most deadly polluters of anywhere in the Mediterranean. Now the plant is notorious source of dioxin and dust from the plant is believed to be the reason why Toronto has a lung cancer rate of 30% higher than the national average. As a matter of fact, that plant is so toxic that farmers are forbidden from raising livestock within 20 kilometer radius of the plant. And in 2008, the government ordered the slaughter of thousands of sheep and other animals that were found to have exceed excessively high levels of dioxin. Now, the area could also be making a lot of money off of tourists because of its nice beaches and pastoral farmland, but the steel mill keeps potential visitors away. Now, the mill is currently under government control, and health officials ordered the mill to partially shut down. Yet, the move was blocked by government authorities, and police partially occupied the plant as part of the criminal investigation and its owners were ultimately arrested and jailed for committing environmental disaster, which is a serious crime in Italy. Yet the mill still continues to operate, producing much less steel than it once had. Now Vincenzo Fornaro, his farm is less than a mile away from the steel mill. And over a decade ago, his entire flock of 600 sheep had to be killed. Since then, he's been forbidden from raising livestock or crops for food. So instead, Vincenzo has decided to grow weed. He doesn't grow pot to smoke or sell. Instead, he grows it to pull toxins from the steel mill out of his soil. Now, he said he's been plagued or he's planted huge stands of the industrial hemp on his farm. 
and he's using a tactic called uh, fighter mediation and this tactic uses plants to remove heavy metals, radioactive material, and other bad stuff from the earth. Now the industrial hemp has has been used to clean up deadly pollutions before and most famously uh, the use of industrial hemp was uh, used near the site of the deadly nuclear meltdown at Chernobyl, Ukraine. In, and that was in the mid-1990s. The company named uh, Phytotech worked with researchers in the Ukraine-based seed bank to plant thousands of hemp plants in and around Chernobyl. But uh, phyto mediation is a relatively new process, but it is very helpful. Considering that there are tens of thousands of polluted sites across the United States in desperate need of safe cleanup, and this process could be the answer to a lot of our issues. Nothing can be built on polluted sites until they're cleaned, meaning their sites sit and continue to pollute the earth until something is done. And billions are spent each year in efforts to clean up toxic soil. And the time for phyto -medi mediation is now. Now, according to researchers from Colorado State University, hemp is extremely effective in removing the toxic element um, cadmium from soils. And this is convenient because cadmium contamination is everywhere. It's seen in fossil fuels, old school pesticides, and many other byproducts of human civilization. Now, since hemp grows quickly, has deep roots, and doesn't appear to be stunted by pollution, hemp is one of the best plants to use for phyto mediation. Or phyto remediation. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. Oh well. Another amazing thing about using hemp for this process is that once it has removed toxic chemicals from the soil, it can still be put to use. The hemp can be converted into an oil for lubrication or other industrial purposes, and it can be used as insulation. And it can even be used as paper or construction material. The most heavy metals appear to accumulate in the leaves of hemp, so it, it's best to use the stalks or seeds. Now, while it might not be a good idea to eat or wear hemp products culled from areas where nuclear waste once glowed, this hemp is still safe to use in other applications. And in Italy, where hemp is being grown to detox the land, or the toxic chemicals released by the mill, activists are actually beginning to use hemp to replace steel. Activists have built a brand new apartment building completely made out of hemp fiber. So, isn't that just too cool? So, now that we have hemp, stepping up to save the day. Good karma is karma is good. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, now, where is that? <laughs> okay, I know, I, I know I had it, I know I had it, what did I do with it? It was about Fukushima and how they uh, were having some issues with Fukushima again. Maybe I put it in my pocket and just don't remember putting it in there. Let me see. Hmm. I did not put it in my pocket either. Damn it. What did I do with that? I hate when that happens. Oh well. It's one of those things where I think they probably could start doing that at least at the outer edges of Fukushima and then start working your way in because whatever that article was that I obviously did not save like a total dumbass um damn it damn it damn it damn it 
hate when that happens. Well, <clears throat> I think if they were to put cannabis or hemp around Fukushima, because it's, it's supposedly leaking into the ocean, which it's been doing that for a while. Anyway, it's just that now they're having, they're having to admit some of the massive leak. But, <clears throat> or just exactly how massive it is. Uh, okay, so since I was talking about cannabis, let's go for this one. And I also heard from my Uncle Tommy today that um, marijuana legalization is apparently on the ballot for this November here in Kansas. So, I may actually have to do what I, yeah, well, I can vote on one thing. Show support for the plant. Because, you know, that would be one hell of a cash crop, especially out here. You don't have to, you don't have to, um, irrigate it. It'll, it'll do just fine. So, this is from MarijuanaMoment.net. And it is from last week. Support for marijuana legalization at record high. There's a new survey that shows this. Apparently, support for marijuana legalization is at an all-time high across party lines in new polls. 68% of American voters now want to end cannabis prohibition. That's according to a survey released on Wednesday by leading progressive think tank, uh, the Center for American Progress, or CAP, and the research firm GAB Strategies. Excuse me. Now, the breakdown of the demographics on who's now on board for legalizing marijuana is 57% of Republicans, 77% of Democrats, 62% of Independents, 66% of men, 69% of women, 69% of whites, 72% African Americans, and 64% Latinos. Now you know that it's an uphill battle basically because the government is on the slide making a shitload of money off both ends of that equation. So, now the poll which surveyed 1,000 registered voters also found sizable bipartisan support for measures to seal the criminal records of nonviolent offenders who serve their sentences. Those, um, another recent national survey examining American sentiments towards cannabis reform have shown similar majority support for legalization. Gallup released a 2017 poll that found 64% of Americans support legalization. So, but the cap legalization numbers are the highest yet. So, while the upward movement in public opinion with respect to legalization has been a consistent trend, especially over the past decade, the bipartisan nature of the new survey results is significant. Because in an era of increasing bipartisanship, public support for ending cannabis crim criminalization is an issue that crosses party lines. That's from Paul Armentano, who is a deputy director of NORML, or N-O-R-M-L. More and more elected officials and those who wish to be elected must acknowledge that advocating in favor of marijuana policy reform is a political opportunity, not a political liability. And Ed Chung, who is the vice president of criminal justice reform at CAP, told Marijuana Move or Moment that the message is clear. Cannabis legalization is the will of the people, and lawmakers should take note. Now, legalization is certainly going to be at least a bipartisan issue, and I think you'll see a lot of progress with elected officials who are going to be out front about this. That's according to Chung. Now, I I think that there's a lot of work still to be done about how this plays out in different states and nationally as well, but the first step is getting the concept of this socialized among elected leaders, selected ones. And oftentimes, unfortunately, those 
leaders are not leading on this issue, but following. So looking ahead to the 2020 presidential selection, Chung said this is going to be one of those issues that's going to speed up very quickly. Two and a half years from now is a lifetime for this issue and for other social justice type issues moving forward. The support is going to only increase from here. Of course, that's me looking into my crystal ball, but I don't see how any candidate, any credible candidate, who wants to capture the majority of the American public is going to look at this issue, and I don't think anybody is going to keep from supporting current policy, which is sad. This is according to Chung. The survey also demonstrated widespread support for states to automatically seal the records of nonviolent criminal offenders, allowing people who had served their time and paid their debts to re-enter society and pursue work, education, and family life, the, off the authors say. A solid 70% of respondents agreed that states should automatically seal the records of individuals convicted of nonviolent felonies or misdemeanors if the person has completed his or her sentence and was not committed or has not committed another criminal offense. And that includes 75% of Democratic voters and 66% of Republican voters. So, hmm, criminal justice reform? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, the poll also found that 54% of marijuana legalization opponents support automatically sealing the records of people convicted of cannabis possession. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. So, it is on the rise. Yeah, Grammy, I have no idea what the hell a credible candidate is. Okay. <laughs> Poxified, it depends on what you're snacking on, sweetie. Oh, I have rulers too. I, I even have a yardstick, Grim. And it's even a yard long. It's kind of scary, a yardstick being a yard long. I know, go figure. Okay. I think there is one more. I had several other that were just kind of, you know, huh. you know, the shit that the mainstream media focuses on, and it's like, mmm, I just can't go there. I'm just not feeling it. So, we we'll do that puff puff pass thing over here on the effing site. And then I'm going to come check out. I originally saw this over on Mines. And I think I read something about it a couple weeks ago as well. But this is from the terraistletters.webly or weebly.com. Be a terraist, not a terrorist. So, um, Marijuana and the Prohibition of the Divine Feminine, or, so, yes, yeah, I do, I got some big old rulers, <laughs> I got big and, so, <clears throat> If they want to win the revolution, they must win it with Rasta. You can't win no other way, because if you win another way, you're going to fight again. When you're Rasta is when you are no more war. That's from Bob Marley. I know that shocks you. So the downtown number one train rumbled and slowed to a halt at 42nd Street in the middle of Hurricane Human. The doors rung bling blong and opened, releasing a stream of rushing people. Everyone shuffled out and about, 
transferring to other trains or tightening their coats on their way to the outside cold, and everyone was hurried on a mission of the utmost important, as usual. Then the train's doors bling, blong, and close again. And as the train clicked down the tunnel, people went on their way. The station quieted, and two youngsters drumming on buckets could be heard more clearly. The drummers were spinning their drumsticks and rapping on their buckets at 180 beats per minute, and a few people gathered around them, the beat transporting them away like a train, only inside. When the downtown one left the station, it swirled behind a windy vacuum. Coats fluttered, hair waved, and garbage tumbled, and everything was moving. The people waiting for the uptown one were pacing to keep warm, and the drummers were flowing. Everything and everyone was moving. Everyone except for Sean Institu. Now Sean was leaning up against the last pillar at the downtown end of the platform waiting for the uptown one. His hands were nestled in his black leather goose down bomber, and his left foot was propped up resting on a pillar. He was wearing black sneakers, black slacks, and a white t shirt <clears throat> white t shirt under his black leather bomber, and unaffected by the cold. His clothing was too stiff and heavy to flutter in the gusts left by the train, and his hair was too short to measure, let alone be stirred. He stared straight ahead, watching the drummers, and observing the commuters with a scowl. I think this is going to be a very long thing, and I don't know that I necessarily want to... Wow, this is a hell of a... Get the book before it was banned. Okay, that's a hell of a long... Hell of a long... Story. So, I have given you, basically... <laughs> If Flash gives me shit about this, but that's the first couple of paragraphs out of this. And it's quite a long story, looks like. Ah, it is a protagonist of the terrorist letters, and it's a rollicking journey through New York City. Okay, well, I will just go ahead and share this, because, yeah. I really don't feel like reading a novel tonight, if you know what I mean, Vern. <laughs> so, I'll just go ahead and share that and let you read it at your own leisure if you wish to. And if you don't wish to, hey, I understand. Because, yeah, it was like, wow, this is a freaking novel. This isn't just a, okay, this is what I get for not pre-reading stuff. <laughs> Okay, well, how about I go check this one out? <clears throat> this is from medicalnewstoday.com, and it is from last week. Almond butter versus peanut butter. Which one is healthier? I don't know. I've never tried almond butter, but I really do like my peanut butter. So, while peanut butter is a staple food in many households, there are a variety of other nut butters on the market. Nut butter, nut butter. <laughs> Including almond butter. But knowing which type of nut butter is the most nutritious can be challenging. So, nut butters often contain unsaturated fats, which are healthy fats that the body needs. And this makes them a great addition to most diets. So when comparing products, it's most useful to compare the same serving size. Serving sizes are standardized, so to make reading and comparing nutrition labels easier. So, the nutritional information. Um, almond butter has 98 calories compared to peanut butter has 96. Um, it has 3.4, is that grams of protein compared to 3.6 in peanut butter. It has 8.9, uh, 
of fat compared to 8.2 in peanut butter, 3.0 of carbohydrate compared to 3.6 in peanut butter. Now, almond butter I'm saying first, so 1.6 of fiber compared to 0.8 fiber in peanut butter, 0.7 sugar, whereas peanut butter has 1.7, ah, 0.7 saturated fat, whereas peanut butter has 1.7. 5.2 of monounsaturated fat, whereas peanut butter has 4.2, and 2.2 polyunsaturated fat compared to 2.0 for peanut butter. Now, in protein, both almond and peanut butter contain about the same amount of protein. Although nut butters are, are a source of protein, they are not a complete protein. This means they do not contain all the essential proteins and amino acids that the body requires. So eating a variety of legumes and vegetables and seeds and nuts and whole grains will provide all of the essential proteins and amino acids that a person needs. As for the fiber, almond butter has double the amount of fiber that peanut butter does. And the fiber is especially important for regulating bowel movements, improving overall health, which if your gut or your intestines, your digestive tract is healthy, then your overall health is more than likely going to be better. That's um, also good at helping a person feel full, providing prebiotics for the large intestine, helping control diabetes, and lowering levels of bad LDL cholesterol in the blood. Ah, I, maybe I need to get some almond butter. Yes, nut and butter. Um, oh, <laughs> Vinny, you're so silly. Let's see. Okay, as for the fats, the fat content between the different nuts varies significantly, and some people may consider almond butter a better option than peanut butter as it contains less saturated fats and more unsaturated fats. And the sugar content, almond butter is roughly 50% less sugar than peanut butter, even in unsweetened varieties. However, peanut butter also has low sugar content. So, when purchasing almond butter and peanut butter, it is essential to check the nutrition label and buy products with no added sugar or salt whenever possible. Now, as for minerals and vitamin E, almond butter contains a higher amount of magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, and calcium, and the body could not produce energy without magnesium. It's also vital for bone health. And potassium is an essential electrolyte that the body requires for normal function. Both almond butter and peanut butter are good sources of vitamin E, and vitamin E reduces inflammation, excuse me, and the risk of heart disease. As for unsaturated fats, um, which are beneficial for general health, there are two different families of unsaturated fats. There's the omega-3s and the omega-6s. Now, the human body cannot make omega-3s and omega-6 on its own, so it's necessary to get them through foods. And many people do not eat enough omega-3s in their diet. And eating enough unsaturated fat is associated with proper growth, development, and anti-inflammatory properties. Almond butter has a slightly higher amount of unsaturated fats. Go away, fly. Now, as for the risks, peanuts belong to the legume family, just like peas and beans, and peanuts grow underground and may become contaminated with um, aspergillus mold, aspergillus mold, ooh, which is highly toxic. So fortunately, peanut butter has a significantly lower risk of contamination than peanuts because the manufacturing process removes a lot of the mold. Nuts are also common allergens, so people should use caution when trying new nut butters and avoid any known allergens. 
So, how do you want to use your nut butter? Hmm, this could really, I mean, my brain keeps wanting to go off on a wrong tangent, and we just can't let me do that. So you can use, and then here it has, you can use it as a spread. <laughs> it's just encouraging my little wild and woolly evil twin inside my mind to go off on a naughty tangent. Hmm, okay, so almond butter and peanut butter are spreads, and people can use them in the following ways. You know, like nut butter and jelly sandwiches, which is something I grew up on as a child. On toast with sliced banana and cinnamon, although I actually kind of sort of like doing that on a flour tortilla and then rolling it up so it's like a, a peanut butter, banana, and cinnamon burrito. Quite tasty, actually. Or on vegetables such as celery or toasted sweet potato. I've never thought about doing that on toasted sweet potato. Now that I have actually decided that I kind of sort of like sweet potatoes, that's an interesting thought. I may have to try that. You can also use it for cooking. Um, try adding nut butter to sauces and dressings for a little bit of a nutty flavor. You know, um, let's see. Or you can, hey, they even have a recipe here for a Thai dressing. Also, you can use it in smoothies, which, yes, I have added that to smoothies before, although my smoothies are not necessarily your really... Um, good for you smoothies. My smoothies are usually, you know, you put the peanut butter in there and about the only time I will eat like Oreo type cookies. And I don't want the, I don't like the creamy middle stuff. I just want the cookie part. <laughs> and I'll crunch that up and I'll put that in my ice cream smoothie. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a total health nut here. So, <clears throat> So in summary, unless a person has allergies, nuts can be a healthy part of their diet in every life stage, which I do. I consume a lot of peanut butter, and I'm going to have to try some almond butter. It may also be easier for people to incorporate more nuts into their diet by using nut butters like peanut or almond butter. And almond butter does have certain health advantages over peanut butter. However, Eating many different fruits, including a variety of nuts, can help the body get all of the essential nutrients it needs. So, um, is soy good for your health? No. Okay, I don't think it is, but that's just me. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and have another Nutter Butter Peanut Butter Sandwich Cookie. Um, what's this? What are you talking about there, Vinny? I don't trust Q or anything else for supposed advice. Oh, okay. Mmm. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I think that Q stuff is just put there to to lead the little sheep astray. And sometimes I think it's, it's you know, to, to get you to thinking, you know, look over here, pay no attention to what's going on over there. I just, mm, I don't go out of my way to pay attention to it anymore. How's that sound? Okay, where's the little guy that's doing the yum, 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 yum. Okay, we'll do the chocolate bar because, yeah. Have another Nutter Butter Peanut Butter Sandwich Cookie. And have you ever given peanut butter to your doggy? <laughs> and you know, I found out a couple weeks ago, it's very similar to give a piece of banana to a bunny rabbit. My bunny rabbit really loves fresh banana. And so whenever I peel a banana, I have to give her, oh, about a half an inch of it. And she takes it right out of my hand and chows right down and then looks at me like, that's all you're going to give me? Yes, that's all I'm going to give you. Because I don't want to make you sick, you silly bunny. And my dogs do not like fresh banana, but they like dried bananas. Go figure. Craziness. Craziness. Okay, let's see. Where else do I want to go? Ooh. Ooh. 
it might be that time to go and check out the pig. But you know what? I think I will go. Miss Kate shared this earlier. Or actually, she shared a link, and I clicked on it to go to the original story. And in the San Francisco Chronicle, um, it's sfchronicle.com, Permit Patty resigns after cannabis uh, from cannabis firm amid backlash from fellow entrepreneurs. Now, I'd never heard of Permit Patty, so this is going to be a new one for me. Almost as soon as Allison Edels, I don't know how to, whatever, as soon as her colleagues in the Bay Area cannabis industry recognized her as Permit Patty, they began purging her products from their shelves. Now, several Bay Area marijuana dispensaries said that they will no longer carry Treat Well Health products after Edel or Idol or however you pronounce that, the company's founder, was outed as the notorious white San Francisco woman caught on viral video supposedly calling police on an eight-year-old African-American girl for selling water without a permit. You must have permission. You must pay us to get permission. Well, a Treatwell spokeswoman, Cynthia Gonzalez, said Tuesday that she ha that Edel resigned from the company. It is Miss Edel's belief that treat well its employees and patents should not have to suffer because of a situation that occurred in an escalated moment. Escalated moment. Okay. Her resignation followed days of criticism from former treat well customers. Compassion is supposed to be at the forefront of this industry. And to see the way that this has played out with the complete disregard for a child's well-being, I think it was a disappointment. That was from Katie Rabinowitz, who is the general manager of Magnolia or Magnolia Oakland. And Rabinowitz said that she won't be ordering any more treat, treat well products and discounted the business's leftover inventory. The proceeds from the remaining sales, she said, will be given to the girl who was selling the water and to the Black Girls Code, which is a San Francisco nonprofit, nonprofit focused on providing technology education for African American girls. Other dispensaries have done the same. Berkeley Patients Group on Sunday announced on social media that it would no longer be selling Treatwell products. And uh, profits from our remaining inventory will be donated to Cinnamon Girl, Inc., which is an Oakland-based mentoring organization for ambitious girls of color. Hmm. Okay. Treatwell, which was founded in 2015, according to its website, uh, though the Secretary of State's database does not show any company by that name registered in California, um, it manufactures cannabis tinctures that are marketed for both humans and pets. A one-ounce bottle sells for roughly $80 retail. Rabinowitz said Monday evening that she expects to sell out of the Treat Well products in the next 24 hours, and the inventory of mostly tinctures used for pain relief should bring in between $1,500 and $2,000. We're a women-run company, and we value integrity, she said. And this is not the first company that we've ceased relationship with because of their morals. The infamous episode erupted Saturday when a video posted to Instagram from the day before showed Edel on her cell phone outside her San Francisco apartment, and the woman recording the video accused Edel of calling police on her 8-year-old daughter who was selling $2 bottles of water outside of her South of Market apartment building. Now this woman don't want to let a little girl sell some water. She be calling police on an 8-year-old little girl, the woman recording the video says. And you can hide all you want, but the whole world's going to see you. Hmm. Illegally selling water without a permit, Edel says back. Yeah, these people, you must have a permit. You must ask permission. 
The controversial run-in soon exploded online, and Edel began feeling the wrath of enraged social media users, accusing her of being racist. And soon, the permit Patty moniker hit the meme, or soon it hit, and a meme was born. The incident was the latest viral encounter in which a Bay Area resident was captured on video and accused of racism. In April, a white woman dubbed BBQ Becky was recorded calling police on a black couple using a charcoal grill in a non-approved area of Lake Merritt in Oakland. Non-approved area. All righty. Edel did not immediately return messages from the Chronicle on Monday, but on Saturday she told the Chronicle that she only pretended to call police after an argument with the girl's mother escalated. She said she lost her temper after the girl had been making noise outside her apartment for hours. Okay. Well. Still, that doesn't sit well with cannabis in industry insiders like Rabinowitz, and she said she's had lunch with Edel and spoken at events with her, and when she saw the video, she immediately recognized the woman. Rabinowitz said the cannabis industry has long operated in a gray area, and marijuana is still federally illegal, and vendors keep that in mind. In the cannabis industry, there's an unspoken rule. Don't snitch. Well, Edel's own company, which also sells products for pets, is even more legally sketchy, given that cannabis is not approved and regulated for use on animals. So in a 2015 interview with the Chronicle, she said, the practice is kind of like don't ask and don't tell. And here, she just put a great big old honkin' bullseye on herself. Because you piss off the wrong people, and they will dig up every ounce of dirt they can find. And spread it. So, now it is time. Let's see. I don't want to go there. I'm going to check out the pig. Because it's getting to be that time. PIGazette.com on this Wednesday, the 27th of June, 2018. So, their word of the day is conflict resolution, which is two words, guys. It's talking about a problem until one of the parties kills himself out of desperation. Not to be confused with the crude but effective, nuke them till they glow. Hmm. In the quotable quotes section, they must really like Dr. Hurd. Tyranny is rule by force and intimidation. That's what Maxine Waters is advocating, and anybody in her party will call her out on it because they agree. And, oh, excuse me, and nobody in her party will call. They feel the same way. Shouldn't surprise us. Everything her party stands for is based on tyranny. You will get your health care on the terms the government decides. You will engage only in speech, love speech, like Maxine Waters, not hate speech. The government deems fitting. You will not own a gun, even if you're not a criminal and only wish to defend yourself. You will not keep most of your earnings unless you join the swamp and contribute to the establishment politicians. You will not have a hot shower with a strong stream. You will not drink Diet Cokes over a certain size. You will not use plastic straws. You will not discriminate against people the government likes, transgenders, Muslims, Democrats. And you will be permitted to discriminate against, discriminate against people the government dislikes, like Trump supporters, white Republican men, and wealth producers. That is from Dr. Hurd. Hmm. Picking sides, picking sides. Okay. Oh, G 
June 20th, a Kansas man was charged today with lewd and lascivious behavior for his repeated attempts to have sex with the tailpipe of a parked automobile. That's according to court records. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's my home state. Makes me proud. <laughs> Apparently, Ryan Mellick, who is 23, was named in the municipal court complaint accusing him of exposing himself with the intent of arousal or gratifying sexual desires. Malik has been summoned to appear in court July the 19th to answer the criminal charges. Now, Malik, <coughs> cops say, was intoxicated when he sought to trist with a vehicle on the 1st of May in Newton which is a city 25 miles north of Wichita. <laughs> That's not too far from where one of my brothers lives. Local cops responding to a 911 call about a man beneath a vehicle discovered him endeavoring to place his penis into the tailpipe of a car parked outside of an apartment complex. Now, Malik, who is a Newton resident, was oblivious when we initially contacted him. Uh, Malik, whose blood alcohol content was later measured to be more than four times the legal limit, continued trying to have sex with the tailpipe in the presence of the officers. Cops subsequently tased him, took him into custody, and transported him to a local hospital for treatment. The criminal complaint lists six witnesses who reportedly saw him trying to have sex with the tailpipe and his rap sheet includes arrest for marijuana possession and aggravated assault on a tailpipe. Okay, I just added the on a tailpipe. That, wow. Dude, seriously, I have never, ever, ever been that freaking drunk. Ever. Ever. I don't know anybody that's ever been that freaking drunk. Wow. Okay. This date in history, the 27th of June, 1966, featuring a vampire, Barnabas Collins in the starring role, the innovative TV cult classic, the only sci-fi soap opera, Dark Shadows, debuts on ABC. Oh, I loved that show, and I actually got a chance to watch it a year or two ago, and I thought, wow. And to think I really loved this show. <laughs> Oh, well. Also, this date in history, the 27th of June, 1979, in an utterly Orwellian, some are more equal than others decision, the U.S. Supreme Court greenlights racism in hiring by approving racial quotas. Yippee-yay, -yay, cow patty. And that's what they got for this date in history over on the pig. Go on over to pigazette.com. Say hey to Hambo and Porkus. Tell them Grammy sent you. And watch them run. <laughs> it's really kind of funny. Because I don't think either one of them is a real good runner. So. Um, do I want to do that? Or do I want to go... Let's see. Ouch, kitty cat. Okay, I'm going to go with this one. This is from ageofautism.com. The new Italian government is set to repeal the vaccine mandates. Yay! So, after months of negotiations, Italian um, Italians have finally managed to form a government based on the Five Star Movement and the Northern League, both of whom were opposed to vaccine mandates piloted by Beatrice Lorenzen and the previous center-left government. Now, the new health minister, Guglia Grillo, is in favor of vaccines but against Lorenzen's law. And protests in Italy against a mandatory vaccination are set to take place in Italy in two days' time, which is June the 3rd. Um, at at least five venues as part of the international protest against mandatory vaccination. Now, as we've seen in recent months, elements within the vaccine lobby have indicated a willingness to back off pushing for mandates and compulsion, trying to trade this in against this 
allowing a serious public discussion about the safety of its products. That, of course, is the last thing they want. We rather imagine, though, that age of autism, that the Italian public will have learned rather a lot about the lobby after five years of Lorenzen's machinations. It will also be interesting to see how Grillo, who has a medical degree, deals with the Parliamentary Commission report on the deaths and illnesses of Italian military personnel. So, will this continue to be swept under the rug? Hmm. And there are quite a few comments underneath this one as well. But it's nice to see that there are others out there that are going, no. When you start making it mandatory, it makes me wonder why it has to be mandated. I mean, if people actually have a choice and they choose not to, then what's going on that all of a sudden this has to be? You have to have this. I don't think so. Yes. Um. Deer ticks. You know, we got wasting disease out here. People do not wish to um, hunt deer out in this neck of the woods anymore because of the wasting disease. And uh, my farmer and I were discussing it the other day, and I said, I wonder how much of that has to do with that uh, Roundup Ready corn that the deer get into. Okay, I have time for, let's see what this one is. Maybe, maybe, maybe. From the Wall Street Journal, let's see if. Oh, that's a pretty long one. How 4 a.m. is the most productive hour. Really? It depends on what you're talking about. I'll just go ahead and share this. I don't know that I want to don't know that I necessarily want to. Oh, and groundhogs? Yes, groundhogs are notorious for that. Okay. Um, how about we check out, let's see, what other news? Let's go check out antimedia.com. See what they got going. Um, no sympathy for devil. Evil doesn't deserve civility. What? Let's check this out. From the antimedia. Okay. which it's actually over on greed, greedmedia.com. Huh. No sympathy for the devil, because evil doesn't deserve civility. Hmm. It wasn't really a statement or a question. It was an accusation. And it was two days after the election. Two days after we elected an openly racist man who bragged about sexually assaulting women. My anger had apparently ruffled my acquaintance. Yeah, I was angry, livid, sad, and terrified. Who are we talking? Are you talking about? Oh, she's talking about right Trumples. But I didn't say any of that. I offered a smile, and I tilted my head, and I plas uh, placated and soothed. My voice curled around words that I didn't mean, and my head screamed at him in anger. Why are you not angry? My soft voice and my traitorous smile were on autopilot, and I blame my conditioning, but that's really just a cop-out. Okay. So we were raised on polite and nice, the golden rule and how do you do's, and we were taught that politics and religion should never be discussed in polite company. 
Oh, maybe we need to redefine polite company. Our politics are shrouded in coded language, yes. Abuses are minimized to appease our delicate sensitivities, and our history is whitewashed and the unseemly parts of our yeah, unseemly parts of our country's past have been snuffed out. We place niceness and civility at the premium over humanity and reality. And we've told ourselves lies about who we are for so long that some of us are only now waking up to who we really are. Our greatness is a facade. It's a false bravado and a lie. And we are angry. We're wit witnessing corruption and hate and Nazi marching in the streets and walking in the halls of the West Wing. We've been told to calm down and our jokes are crude, our language too coarse, our response too rude. So what happened to civility? What happened to being nice? You seem really angry. Well, what they really mean is we're making them feel uncomfortable. We're shaking their foundations of normality. We're holding up a mirror to things that they are determined to ignore. And this premium on politeness and civility has been a tool for evil throughout history. Pedophiles and rapists are super nice while grooming their victims. Nice allows preachers to rape, priests to molest, and still hold positions of power. Nice tells children to be seen and not to be heard. Keeping victims in a cage of nice and polite serves the perpetrators well. Nice is the easiest and most inconsequential thing to be. Nice people kick puppies and nice people turn in their neighbors when the Gestapo came to town. Nice is apathy. Niceness likes to act indignant in the face of incivility, entitled to pleasantries and decorum. Nice will admonish that we will hand over the election to the tyrants because tyrants will be less evil if we just act more civil. Right? Civility and niceness is a tool of supremacy. Politeness in the face of atrocities is begging for more atrocities. And tyrants weaponize a nice population. Nice will write op-eds about the loss of civility in public discourse. There was never any civility, just the appearance of it. We are not civilized. We just like to pretend that we are. The civilized don't shoot unarmed citizens. The civilized don't let a city sur uh, suffer with lead and water for four years. The civilized don't steal land from native people and slaughter them in the name of civilization. The civilized don't perform medical experiments on marginalized people. The civilized don't steal from the poor to help the wealthy. The civilized don't turn water cannons on native people. The civilized don't turn away people seeking safety from countries being torn apart because our government's actions. The civilized don't let thousands of people die after a hurricane. The civilized don't lie about everything that matters and they sure as hell don't let lies go unanswered in press conferences. The civilized don't try to humanize white supremacists in think pieces. The civilized don't legislate hate in the name of religious freedom. The civilized don't try to suppress voters. The civilized aren't afraid of the people's voice. The civilized don't elect racists or pussy grabbers or vote for child molesters or elect men who assault reporters. The civilized don't put children in cages. The civilized don't dehumanize groups of people to gin up hate and votes. The civilized don't shrug at mass shootings. The civilized don't place a higher priority on guns over children's lives. The civilized don't put children in cages. You said that already, hun. 
The civilized don't impose their religious beliefs on other people. The civilized don't let billionaires determine the future and well-being of a population of people. The civilized don't rip babies and children from their parents' arms. The civilized don't rip babies from wombs either. Got to put that in there. That's my little two cents worth. The civilized don't run a prison system that profits off brown bodies. The civilized don't put children in fucking cages. No, they do not. We the people are choking on politeness. There's a collective lump in our throats that we can't swallow any longer. And there will be no more sympathy for the devil and no comfort for those who aid him. Now this does go on for a while, but I am out of time. And you know what? That is a wonderful, wonderful rant, and it applies to both sides of the aisle. Actually, it applies to every single one in the political spectrum. My thoughts. So, thank you all for listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on this Wacka 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 Doodle Wednesday where I had several things that I went to and just decided, nope, nope, can't go there, can't finish that. Um, I will be back Friday, I promise, unless I get nasty-ass weather again. But I plan on being back Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of Grammy's Rocket Chair. But until then, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your week, um, evening. And I hope your Thursday is pretty freaking awesome as well. I know I'm going to be out first thing in the morning playing in the garden before it gets too freaking hot. So, until then, I guess I really do love you all. I really do, even though there's some of you I'm not real crazy about, but I love you anyway. And I wish you all just enough. Good night.